Then, going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still, not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, he prayed so fervently, that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. This is a very dramatic image, sweat falling to the ground like drops of blood. I think that if that were happening to me, I would be very worried. I'm not an athlete, so if I were sweating that much, it would probably be a sign of trouble, a sign to back off at least. That's probably true for many of us. For those of us that are more athletic, it's probably a more positive thing, sweating so much. Of course, with proper hydration and training, this is not a problem. If we look at this image of sweat dropping to the ground like blood, it's a very human image. This is something that connects us with the humanity of Jesus. This whole scene in the Garden of Gethsemane. The exertion while praying is kind of difficult to reconcile. Luke's account of Gethsemane goes into more detail than Matthew or Mark. As Father Schreiter says, Jesus is more anxious and restless in the Matthean and Markan accounts. He goes to pray three times and three times comes back to check on the disciples. This going back and forth heightens the sense of drama in the story. The Gospel of Luke is a bit different because there's only one departure and return, as we've seen in the scripture reading we've just read. It mentions the sweat, like drops of blood, and it's the only account where an angel appears to him to strengthen him. Jesus in the Gospel of Luke seems to be in a different frame of mind than in Matthew and Mark. And probing that would be helpful. We need to get to the Greek word agonia, which normally is translated into English as agony. Agonia in ancient times was a way to describe the preparation of athletes for the arena. It's psyching up, it's training. The sweat is a sign of exertion, both mental and physical. In some ways, the appearance of the angel in Luke's account is showing up to be a personal trainer for him, to strengthen him, to keep him going, to make sure everything is going right. What's being prepared for? What's the great athletic endeavor Jesus is psyching himself up for in his passion? He's preparing to take on the combined forces of evil in the passion. He has a long struggle and that struggle will be to stay on course, to complete what needs to be done. And he maintains that training in Luke's account of the Passion. He's calm and composed. He talks to the women who are weeping for him. He forgives his executioners. He welcomes the good thief into paradise. He commends his spirit to God. This passion is seen as an accomplishment of his training. He needs the training to be able to hang in there through this. And his agonia leads to a victory on Good Friday. Athletic arenas were frequent sites for early Christian persecutions. And Jesus' example as an athlete prayerfully training for his passion and death was a good sign for them to imitate as they prepared to give witness to their faith. As Father Schreider says, a Christian death in which allegiance to Jesus has not been abjured was taken as a victory, with Christ himself rewarding the crown. So it called for a prayer discipline that was intense, a prayer discipline very similar to the discipline of an athlete preparing physically and mentally for their contests.
The Garden of Gethsemane plays different roles in the Synoptic Gospels. In Matthew and Mark, it's a scene where Jesus is in agony himself. He's in anguish. He's going back and forth. Where the tension builds, at the end he submits to God's will and surrenders himself. In the Garden of Gethsemane in Luke's Gospel, we find Jesus going to a place he's frequently gone a frequent training ground for him as he prepares to encounter evil in the course of his ministry. Luke's vision of the Garden of Gethsemane gives us a theology of struggle, which is important to us who follow the spirituality of Christ's blood. Father Schreider says, The prayerful discipline needed to enter into combat with evil and injustice in situations of conflict a spirituality of liberation, according to Father Schreider, is the cultivation of a relationship with God that nourishes and directs the praxis of liberation. So what shapes this spirituality of struggle in our precious blood spirituality? Struggle is not a comfortable thing. Struggle is a thing that we don't want. But I think there's a, an interesting difference in metaphor here, because usually when we talk about the struggle with evil, we combat evil. We're thinking of physical combat as we know it. But Luke takes a different track here. We're talking about the combat of an athletic competition. The athletic competition is a better metaphor. And in fact, Peter tries to introduce the physical combat metaphor in the Garden of Gethsemane when he pulls out his sword, and Jesus immediately tells him to put it away. How do we build a theology of struggle? Well, it's not about occasional contact with God, but a regular practice like an athlete in training, building up endurance over time until the skills become second nature, performed unconsciously under pressure, not only like an athlete, but like a musician. I've heard it said, good musicians practice until they learned it right. Great musicians practice until they cannot get it wrong. Regular prayer is seen as a type of training, a development of a routine, a personal discipline. And it's a discipline for reflexes, for times when that move too quickly for thought, where the right way has to be an instinctive reaction under stress. It's a kind of active waiting. It's an intense focus on the moment, undistracted by things that lead us away from our purpose. It connects us to centers of strength, as well as lets us be attuned to the people we make. It's a spirit of watchfulness, that we sp frequently speak of during the season of Advent. Jesus is seen as the master of preparation. The intensity leads to blood, and the blood leads to strength. Father Schreider makes an important note here that this spirituality will attract and provoke the powers of sin and evil. He quotes the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 3 to 4. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners, in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The meeting place of life and death is where struggle always happens. Resistance is part of our struggle, and frequently it's our only response to evil. But it's not a struggle we can rush into. It's not a struggle where we can improvise our way through it by the seat of our pants. It's a kind of struggle that takes a lifetime of preparation. Otherwise, we'll be overwhelmed and we won't have the endurance needed. We must learn active waiting to develop the reflexes we need. We need prayer. We need disciplined prayer. We need a disciplined heart. Yet, that heart is open to God at all times and open to everyone in need around us. We are called to have the heart and mind of Jesus, who is the model of our lives. The model in good times, the model in bad times. The model in times of trial, and the model of preparation we need for when we endure trials in our lives. There's more we can say about this chapter of In Water and in Blood, and we'll be said soon. 
Next Tuesday, we're going to release a video here at this very same place where we're going to expand on some of the things I talked about here. I'll be joined by a couple of other folks, one person very familiar to you all, and somebody new to us, new to our spirituality. Very excited about this conversation. And you can join the conversation as well. Please feel free to leave comments in the comments section below or to contact us if you have something more extensive to say or if you have an insight that you think we need to be aware of. So in the meantime, may God bless you, may God give you peace, and may we all find redemption in the precious blood of Christ.